Hello, welcome to a Coolux tutorial. Today we're going to discuss how to use venue sites, which is a new feature for pre production and rendering out different camera fly throughs. And the magical part of this is really that now Pandora's in version 5.7 can bring in a wide variety of objects like FBX's, 3DS, OBJ, and .X's. So you can bring in things like drum kits and stages and LED walls and really begin to build a visualizer out of the venue sites. And then lastly, of course, we want to be able to timeline these motions and record the venue site out to be able to share with other members of our production. So here we have on our screen the new manager. I've got a couple media server pros and they are playing their own show. One of the coolest things about venue sites is that you can use your real show blocking and your show programming directly in the venue site so you don't have to program things twice. So here you can see I've got a couple playlists running through a test pattern pre-programmed in an offline kind of mode and I'm using a very simple project with just a couple assets and a couple playlists. Here's my device viewer and then I've got my preview already enabled on both of my servers. So now what we can do is change the orientation of the preview by holding down the alt button and the wheel of the mouse so here we have our standard kind of normal global preview which is good for 2D applications but not really good for visualizing in a 3D environment. So in order to work venue sites properly what we're going to do is we're going to take the outputs of our servers and we're actually going to route those into venue site layers and those venue site layers will represent an LED wall or a projector in our production. Let me better illustrate what we're doing here. So I'm going to compress our servers. And now I'm going to bring in, from device types, a venue site. And the venue site has its own unique icon. It's got a little column there so you can tell what it's doing. In order to see a venue site, all you need to do is be previewing the servers and the venue site. So if I toggle preview on my venue site. I've got my little blue preview boxes around everything here and then in the preview window itself we need to actually select the venue site camera. So we're going to select the venue site camera and now we're actually looking at the venue site. And the venue site is very much like any other site uh, like a regular server in the way that you treat the layers. So the layers of a venue site are the same layers that you're used to in a normal server. And you can go in here and begin to place 3D elements in this way. So let's say we've got a, a 3D car, for example, uh, on our stage and we can zoom around here. Notice as I move my perspective around, now it's actually changing the camera values. So this is what we would then keyframe our viewpoint and target when we want to do fly throughs. But let's go back to layer one. Let's say we have an LED wall over top of our car here. So I'm just going to go to layer two and I'm going to bring in a LED wall which will look like this curved wall here. And we'll put that kind of behind the car, if you will. Let's see how we do here. There we go. So you'll notice first of all that objects now come into Pandora's box with an already uh, a texture shading. So if you look at the object in the inspector, you'll notice here you can define a default shading and uh, texture to fill that wireframe. Because a lot of these objects you're going to bring in don't necessarily have textures. You might not have a texture for a drum kit or for a, a individual lights or individual truss or speaker stacks as you're building your, your visualizer here. So just being able to shade it is quite magical. This represents, on layer two, our LED output. We're going to have a show, we're going to showcase this Nissan, and we want to have this as our Pandora's screen. Think of this curved object as our screen. So all we need to do is route the content from our server outputs into this layer. And it's very simply done by doing a share layer texture to the output texture 
of that server. So I want to see server 2's output 1. And there we go. So you're actually looking now at the output of server 2 through that LED wall. And that's, you're actually seeing the timeline playback occurring through that. So if we go back, for example, to layer 1, we can still go back and scale how that layer looks, of course, inside, of course, now we're on layer 2, and so on. So we still have individual control inside that output. It's just merely being routed into the venue site. Very cool. And then uh, you can imagine how you would get on with this uh, in programming. Obviously, the more 3D objects you have, the more elaborate your set's going to be. Now you can simply time out and keyframe your camera moves as you move through this venue site. So let's just add a couple more objects in here for fun. I'm going to open a couple more layers up and just do this a few more times with you guys. All right, so let's say on layer three, I've got uh, a box set here. So I can take this 3D object of my box. I'm obviously going to rotate it. Maybe my box is sitting over here. Maybe this is a different kind of set piece, if you will. Right? So I'm going to route this output texture from our other server. So this is our second server doing basically a separate wall for the show. So this is a great way to, to visualize multiple outputs in a 3D environment using a variety of 3D objects. Now anything that you can, any attribute that you can touch, of course you can keyframe. When it comes to rendering things out, you might choose to render your camera out. If I'm going to render my camera out, I'm probably going to do that on its own timeline. So I'm going to choose a timeline here for my camera, and let's just do a real simple store active for this camera. I'm going to jump ahead 10 seconds, and we'll do a different store active. So now we'll move our camera around a little bit. Let's say we want to fly around to somewhere over here and I'll store that. Now we should have our nice camera fly through. There we go, very smooth, very cool. Well, the last piece of the puzzle is rendering this out for your client. So in order to do that, there's a couple settings here. Now for the first time, we can really begin to push these manager systems and their video cards harder than ever uh, with all these objects and textures that are rendering directly in the manager. So we need to be able to change the viewport texture size in a multiple number of places. So you can change it in the server, uh, you can change it in the camera, and then lastly, of course, when you render out this movie, it's going to render exactly what you see here in the preview tab. So if you see gray, it's going to render gray. If you see a wireframe, it's going to render wireframe. Whatever is visible in the preview tab is what gets rendered. And you can choose from a list of standard resolutions and you can even do some custom resolutions in here too and there's multiple formats and this will really choose on how your venue site gets rendered out for other people to see as just a regular movie thank you for coming and learning how to use venue sites with coolux products i hope you like this newest visualization tool and come back and see some more tutorials